Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, a dominant political force in Israel and beyond, is at the center of multiple political scandals. Cases of corruption have come up against him and some of his closest advisors and confidants. Recently, police even recommended that Netanyahu be charged for his alleged involvement in two of the incidents. Even though Netanyahu has written these allegations off as a political witch hunt against him and fake news, we wanted to explore what these cases are all about in the first place. Hey guys, I'm Judah, you're watching Now This World, and today's episode, we're going to break down the four cases of alleged corruption against Israeli leader Benjamin Netanyahu and the people closest to him. Let's start with the first case called Case 1000. In this case, Netanyahu and his wife Sarah are alleged to have received almost 300,000 US dollars worth of expensive gifts like fancy cigars and champagne in exchange for political favors from businessmen over the span of 10 years. The two men who are said to be behind those alleged bribes are Israeli-born Hollywood producer Arnon Milchan, whose hit movies include Pretty Woman and recent Oscar winner 12 Years a Slave, and the Australian casino mogul James Packer. Israeli police claim that Milchan received a number of benefits for his gifts to Netanyahu, including the prime minister pushing for the passing of the so-called Milchan Law, which gives tax breaks to Israelis who want to return to Israel after living overseas, a law that would directly benefit Milchan, as the name of the law implies. Netanyahu is also accused of helping Milchan to get a 10-year visa to the United States, preventing the collapse of a television channel he had shares in, and even more. The other billionaire we mentioned earlier, James Packer, was a partner of Milchan, but police haven't said exactly how he benefited from the prime minister. Here's the thing, Netanyahu doesn't even deny receiving these gifts in the first place. He's told police that he has indeed been given these gifts from the billionaires, but he denies that favors were ever given in exchange for them. He says that the hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of gifts were just tokens of their friendship. In this case, police have recommended that Netanyahu be indicted for bribery, fraud, and breach of trust. The next case is case 2000. In this one, police say they have evidence that implicates Netanyahu in a conspiracy with Arnon Moses, the owner of the daily newspaper Yadiot Achronot. Police say the two men agreed to a mutually beneficial relationship that was not in the public's best interest. Here's a little background information that's important to know. Moses' paper has historically been critical of Netanyahu. The two by no means, before this point, have been seen as close confidants of any sorts. Local media even report that behind closed doors, Netanyahu would refer to Moses as Voldemort. You know, that guy from Harry Potter? Now, back to what exactly was negotiated between the two men. Netanyahu reportedly had asked for more sympathetic coverage from Moses' paper. In return, Netanyahu would apparently push legislation forward that would hurt his competitor, Israel Hayum, which is widely seen as a pro-Netanyahu paper that also happens to be bankrolled by American billionaire Sheldon Adelson. Reportedly, police found audio recordings of this conversation on the phone of Netanyahu's former chief of staff, Ari Harrow. Harrow is now serving as the state's witness in this case against Netanyahu in exchange for a lighter sentence in his own case. The prime minister denies any wrongdoing here also. He doesn't deny that the conversations took place, but rather says that they were part of a plan to get incriminating evidence against Moses if he ever tried to blackmail Netanyahu. But police aren't buying that story. In this case, police have also recommended that Netanyahu be indicted for bribery, fraud, and breach of trust. Now on to case 3000. Netanyahu is not a suspect in this specific case, but a number of his top advisors are. So we'll just very briefly touch on this one. This case revolves around alleged corruption and bribery and the state purchase of German nuclear submarines. Police allege that some of Netanyahu's closest confidants used their influence to negotiate the deal and skim profits off the top. Here's the thing, Netanyahu's personal lawyer also represents the Israeli agent of the same German shipyard that makes the submarines. Police have not recommended that Netanyahu be indicted in this case. This investigation is reportedly still developing, so it's certainly one that we'll continue to watch moving forward. Now, the last corruption case so far, Case 4000. Some reports suggest that this case would be the most likely to lead to an indictment of Netanyahu. This case is centered around the allegations that Netanyahu used his influence to help his friend, Shaul Elovich, the owner of Israeli telecommunications giant, Bezek. According to state prosecutors, Netanyahu advanced regulatory benefits worth well over $200 million. In return, Elevich's news site Walla would give Netanyahu favorable coverage. Both Netanyahu and Elevich deny any wrongdoing in this case. But 
the man who ran Netanyahu's communications ministry, tells a different story. In February, Shlomo Filbert signed a state witness agreement to work with prosecutors, and he accuses Netanyahu of directly ordering him to carry out the corruption scheme. Then, former Netanyahu family spokesperson and suspect in Case 4000, Nir Hafetz, also signed a deal to turn state's witness. As of the shooting of this video, police have not yet recommended that Netanyahu be indicted in this case. But what now? In addition to all of these cases, Netanyahu's wife Sarah is also likely to be indicted in her own scandal. She allegedly misused public funds to pay for private chefs and more. Despite whatever evidence is brought up, the decision whether the Netanyahu's will be indicted on any of these cases lies in the hands of Attorney General Avicii Mandelblit, who was once a political appointee of Netanyahu. Despite their history, the Attorney General says he would not hesitate to indict Netanyahu if necessary. If he does move forward with the indictment, it could topple one of Israel's longest serving prime ministers to date and have repercussions not only in Israel, but the entire region. The cases against the Netanyahu's certainly aren't the only political scandals going on around the world today. So which ones do you want us to cover next? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching Now This World and please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more like this every week.